as we were saying yesterday, <laughs> uh, it's been already three months um, uh, this presentation uh, was supposed to happen in, in December. And a lot of things have happened uh, since then. And uh, the, I, I had started this, this presentation in, in December with this quote from a, from a friend of mine, Daniele Gass, a colleague of mine uh, from El País, who tweeted this public service announcement for data journalists using COVID-19 statistics from the, from the health ministry. Uh, in, the, in, the, in that latest uh, report, Spain showed up with, a, with an incidence of, uh, in 14 days, of 240, while Germany was showing up uh, with 302. That was like, it's great, right? Uh, we had a lot less incidence of, of COVID. Uh, except for we were comparing apples to oranges. It was kind of like the uh, two parallel universes from the TV show Fringe. How many of you guys uh, are uh, familiar with that, uh, with that metaphor? The, the data for Germany comes from the ECDC, and they would ask the, the, that, um, that number, that figure, to, to each um, country. And if we go to that report, Spain shows up with 299 instead of, three, instead of 241. Almost the same as, as Germany, because in, in that table that the, the health ministry of Spain uh, uh, showed, they were using uh, they were they were using uh, I think it was uh, diagnosed cases instead of notified uh, cases, which are two completely different uh, metrics. But they were placing them in the in the same um, report. And it's a little bit uh, a, a paradigmatic example of, of how data journalists and data visualization experts have been feeling for a year on top of the, the, um, the issue of, of dealing with, with, um, with the situation as everyone, as everyone else. We've been witnessing uh, and, and being on the edge uh, for so long, trying to pay attention to the use of visual, visuals and to the use of, of data by not just governments in, in this case, but also the misuse of data by, by publications, which has, uh, which has become a, um, a real uh, wake up call for, um, for everyone. We've been always on top. Sometimes we are on top a little bit too much. I don't know if you guys uh, have seen the controversy that surrounded this this map from the from the Georgia um, Georgia in the in the U.S. not in uh, in the Caucasus. Um, the the um, the official um, data center for uh, for COVID nineteen in Georgia. Uh, somebody put these two maps um, together and said that, well, you wouldn't see that, uh, that there's been an increase because both maps look sort of similar. The issue is that this map was never meant to um, be put together with a different map uh, on a different date. It's, it was meant to be consumed as a in this context it's just alerting you of which places have the highest incident that's the objective of the uh, of the map but obviously uh we had to or people were already on the edge with uh with um with the georgia department of uh, of health because of the data visualizations they were putting they were uh putting out one of them was this one Let's, I wish I could uh, 
pulled a South American accent uh, to, to uh, read this. But if you read the copy uh, above the chart slowly, you realize that unless you're a theoretical, uh, theoretical physicist and you adhere to, a, to the elastic concept of time, we sense time uh, linearly, right? And dates are generally uh, treated as an interval or a, or a ratio uh, scale in, in statistics. But in this case, you've got something happening here. There's the second date. There's the third date. There's the fourth date. There's the fifth date, and so on. We're completely out of whack. This is the trend for each one, uh, for one of these uh, counties. The other presentation didn't give you absolutely um, anything. And this is key to, to build a critical understanding of uh, data visualization. In this case, these two maps were never intended to go uh, next to each other. They could have uh, chosen a, a different sort of um, color scheme, a sequential color scheme, instead of just highlighting the, the top values in, in red. They could have done many things. But in the chart, uh, the intent was never uh, implicitly to have this split screen um, comparisons. A chart shows what a chart shows, nothing else. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the, the case of, the, of Rebecca Jones, the former Florida uh, data analyst who um, accused the state of covering the, the extent of the, of the pandemic. And she published a dashboard of, of her own when, when she was uh, dismissed from the from the um, from Florida Department of Health. Now to a developing story. This is video from inside the home of Rebecca Jones. You may remember she used to work for the state health department as a data scientist. She was and remains an outspoken critic of Governor Ron DeSantis and his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. She says armed agents from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement entered her home today. She says they pointed guns at her, her children, and her husband, and that they took all of her computer equipment. I mean, for what? For like showing that the data had been mishandled? This is what happens to, to her? Just like, what? They, the armed police enters her, uh, enter her home? Well, apparently it was because uh, some break in uh, policy uh, she took data from the from the Florida Health Department, but the whole situation um, sort of fell completely, um, completely insane. That is the importance of of data and the importance uh, of data visualization in a moment as critical for uh, for it as as this one. Um, I remember in, in 2016, while I was at The Guardian, one of my colleagues at, uh, at the visuals department, who happened to be from Spain, like pretty much um, a good chunk of folks uh, here, uh, told me that a politician was using graphics um, in the electoral debate. And I was so thrilled because I was, uh, I thought, uh, oh man, Davis has gone mainstream. And um, he shared with me uh, what, what it was. And then I realized, well, hold your horses. That's not the case. Y al final, las recetas liberales que lo que hacen es generar más oportunidades, menos fiscalidad, menos burocracia, más flexibilidad, hace que se cree empleo. Y que con ese empleo se financie la política social, que es lo que esta legislatura sí. no se ha tocado. Ha crecido la política social, tanto mentir, al final se topa, no con un meme, con la realidad. Yeah, they became a meme. So there are many things wrong with this with this chart. The first one, uh, 
which I call the overworked uh, intern uh, mistake, is that the visuals and the numbers don't match at all. That's one. Uh, and they actually fixed that mistake when they posted the same article on a Twitter, uh, on a tweet uh, later on. And I don't know if that made things better because most of the replies were about a very basic uh, charting rule. The fact that the, uh, the base of a bar chart uh, should start at zero. Why? Because the way we read this is by comparing the heights of each bar. And the difference between the first one and the last number is not what the bar suggests. It's not six-ish times, right? And as an example, the, the chart on the, on the left was one of the, one of the replies, and it added an extra layer of nuance. It also adjusted the amounts for, uh, for inflation kind of reminded me of a classic example from the 90s, this ad by, by Chevy. The difference is that this one is advertising, so you can lie in advertising, uh, and the other one is public discourse, and public discourse is meant to be honest, and is meant to be honest and ethical, or at least should be. Um, and if a visualization is meant to inform the public, it should be at least honest. Many people misuse graphics and charts and, and data visualization, however you choose to refer to it. Uh, anyone knows who, who said this? Not at all. This was, um, this is from a, from a book called Graphic Methods for Presenting Facts that is over 100 years old uh, by um, Willard uh, Brinton. It's from, the, from 1914. And the thing is, data visualization can be deceiving, can be manipulated, especially in this moment when creating uh, beautiful and awe-inspiring visuals is increasingly easy. And because perhaps my, my uh, professional conditioning, I am always suspicious when a chart is aesthetically bad. But we also have to be aware that when they look really good, there may be things that we're missing because uh, we just can't differentiate between the beauty and the awe-inspiring aspect um, of it and the, and the lie behind it. So my question is, how do we prevent this from happening consistently, no matter how the chart looks and no matter how the, the context of that uh, chart? And to be honest, uh, visualizations, I believe, should go beyond whether charting uh, device is the right choice uh, and look at the communication intent. And we can be aware of this and prevent it and even confront it uh, if we understand the process and uh, know the pitfalls um, along the, the way. From the moment someone collects the, the data to the moment someone reads the visualization or the visual narrative. We have a set of questions that we can that we can ask. Who's collected this the data set? Who gets counted? What what gets counted? What gets included? Who gets uh, excluded? Uh, why does this person or this company or this whatever the entity uh, fall into this category in the in the data collection? Um, Jacob Harris, a colleague formerly at the, at the New York Times, wrote a, wrote a wonderful piece about the wave of PR data. If you guys Google Jacob Harris, uh, Jacob, J-A-C-O-B Harris, and PR data, you'll find it. It's absolutely delightful. Um, in the analysis bit of the, of the life cycle of a data visualization, has the data been normalized? Are the calculations to compare things consistent? If we're highlighting different views of the data, filtering it, what is the criteria that we set up for that, um, for that filtering? 
And then on the visualization, strictly visualization uh, bit of it, uh, how we're how are we representing the numbers or the categories in the in the visualization? Are we using the appropriate uh, visual encoding? Are we using length or are we using area? Are we using um, uh, uh, color uh, uh, properly uh, for the for the categories? What are the most prominent visual features? Uh, what is the what is what we say the peaks and valleys, the big areas? Are they explained or contextualized? And if something gets highlighted, is it the most significant aspect of the uh, of the data? And then on the story uh, building part of the, of the cycle, are we creating some sort of spurious co correlations? Are we implying something when the, the, we connect the words to the to the story with the with the visualization? Are we being transparent about our methodology uh, with our audience? Um, and this is. Uh, a an example, uh, great example, bordering on on classic already, of a misleading. Sorry, my Alexa. Um, uh, bordering classic already of um, of some sort of uh, perhaps one of the most. Um, if you're if you're an American, one of the most annoying uh, misleading charts by the way of the words used to present it. This implies that visual with these words implies uh, that impeaching the US president is suppressing the will of the vast majority of Americans, right? The problem is that the data doesn't mean that. The map doesn't mean that. And unless you survey Americans, it's a misleading statement. I don't think it means what she thinks it means. This maps in which we shade the, the score list, um, we shade the admin regions uh, based on the data, have a very common uh, issue. The large areas um, carry more visual weight uh, even though they may be actually smaller numbers behind that uh, that geographic region. And we often misread them and think that the total area colored equals the total number. It's um, We know that it doesn't mean that, but our impression of the visual is that um, the larger the area, the larger the, the number. In this, uh, simply, is counted where Republicans um, obtain a majority. Um, a map of a Democratic majority would have probably looked exactly as um, this one. The only thing this map depicts is counties won by each candidate. That's it. It's a perfectly fine tool to investigate um, regional patterns, but not overall votes. How do we create a more honest visual? This is an alternative presentation by uh, Karim Duyev. Uh, and it's, although it's not an exact picture, it sort of tries to address the population misinterpretation. This is another example of um, from Spain's uh, 2019 uh, election. This is a uh, Vox uh, uh, vote by uh, municipality, by, by town in, in Spain. And you can see that there are three places where they barely get any, uh, or they get substantially less uh, votes than in the rest of uh, Spain. These are the three regions, um, the um, with uh, the strongest uh, like nationalist uh, movements. It's Galicia, my hometown, the the Basque Country, and, and Catalonia. And in this view, you see that uh, 
the that um, uh, area in the in the Basque Country was won by somebody else entirely than the rest of Spain, while Catalonia was as well won by somebody entirely different from the rest of Spain. But my hometown or my home region, Galicia, it's actually a stronghold of the uh, popular party, another um, right-wing uh, party in in Spain. The Vox and the uh, and popular party, or the People's Party, were competing for the same sort of um, uh, ideological spectrum, so they got zero votes. If that's that, that's um, on the on our interpretation of what the visuals um, are. That's uh, the, those two maps. Those two map uh, examples. The maps actually uh, point to something very simple. They just say this is the in the case of the U.S. map. It's this is the number of counties won by. Um, by the Republican candidate or the Democratic candidate, the other one just meant this is the percentage of votes um, uh, by uh, by municipality for Vox. But we interpret something, we add interpretation to to it, and sometimes we get misled by that uh, interpretation. If we were to use more than one data set, if we put data in context of something else, we need to be aware of the, of the result. Uh, Tyler uh, Vigan's uh, site, uh, I think you pronounce it like that, Vigan, Vigan, uh, which he turned into, into a book. It's a great resource. It's really a delight in the human reflection of, of correlations. I don't recommend you reading uh, or looking at this at work because you can go down the rabbit hole and lose a ton of time. They're so entertaining and so uh, fun to uh, to watch. But sometimes the correlation you present when you put the two data sets in, in context, they're just spurious, they're just something else. Like this map from The Economist which is, I, I find it, um, I think it's another gem. Uh, it was uh, on a story two years ago uh, about China's digital Silk Road and how the richer provinces tend to have a higher rate of internet users. What do we think that the map is, should be displaying? Remember, this is supposed to put two data sets in context with each other. The richer provinces tend to have a higher rate of internet users. Is the map visualizing the most important um, data sets in the correlation? It's just visualizing what the GDP per capita or per person is in China. Uh, Kaiser Fung from Junk Charts drafted a possible fix to highlight this correlation. I kind of think that um, it's an overcomplication to to maintain the, the geography. I mean, this is, I, I understand this was a, a quick draft and it was not meant to be the final um, the final option of, of this. But I'd say if it's correlation, you just show correlation, you just show a scatter plot. Or, or we break it down the, the variables um, that the, they mapped into it, that they mapped in the same map into two maps into we we juxtapose them into into two visuals. But also, so what? Isn't this an obvious correlation? We need to also be aware of charts that present the obvious as a uh, surprise or that highlight a common phenomenon as a singular issue. I don't think I need a visual or chart to tell me that the richest provinces have the highest uh, 
rates of internet connection. I assume that if that were different, if there were some sort of surprise, then that would necessitate uh, or require a visual to, to demonstrate uh, that. And in this series, last but not least, we're creative, right? Uh, and we're always trying to push the boundaries of uh, how we can use data uh, visualization to connect with our readers. This is um, an example um, from 2011 from the South China Morning Post. The, the sample is already 10 years old, I think. Uh, and Simon Carr, the, the author, published this, 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 it was a full page uh, visualization of the death toll in, in Iraq. It looked like dripping blood and whether or not you agree with the visual metaphor, it's easy to read that the longer red line um, is, means the higher the toll, right? The x-axis at the, at the top and the bars are, is at the top and the, the bars are aligned um, at the, at the top of the, of the chart. Three years later, in 2014, Reuters used a similar um, visualization. And I think I'm generous by saying similar. What is the only annotation in this, in this chart? What does it look like um, it implies? There's been some sort of drop, right? After they enacted the stand your ground law. But in reality, gun deaths went up after Florida enacted its stand your ground law. The graphic on the left uses area, uses an area chart, and the one on the right uses bars, which are slightly rounded to, to emphasize the, the metaphor. The axis on the graphic on the left is on the bottom, and it closes the chart and it creates this negative shape in, in white, which is kind of what we, um, which is what we um, read. And the only annotation on the chart points down to, to the peak um, before the valley, which sort of emphasizes that we should be reading the white space um, and that the red chart is the, the, um, the, the background. In that same 100-year-old book, right after the quote I showed you um, at the beginning, the author says um, this. Which is kind of fixed now, right? You have lots of, um, of books on, um, so for giving us the the basics of um, of data um, visualization. So, with what we've seen, how can we make that first um, chart that we saw a little bit more honest, right? I wish there was somewhere um, we could um, look for the data and compare across European countries or bring context or something, like some sort of um, like a centralized statistics uh, warehouse for Europe, right? Wouldn't it be great to have that? A way to do. So I went to Eurostat, downloaded the uh, sort of it was almost the same data set that they should have been um, 
using for um, for their chart and charted this the percent of GDP dedicated to social protection um, benefits and you see it goes down but there's more to it we can add because we have the data we can add more temporal uh, a larger temporal context to to this and see what was the, the trend since the beginning of the collection of the of the data up until up until now? Yeah, I'm still a lot of white space on on this. We can on top of this add a comparison to whether or not Spain is on track with the with the rest of of Europe. We need to also be um, transparent where we got our data from and um, place it there. And my final uh, recommendation would be to actually use the percentage point difference so you can actually see uh, the ones that are, to, and you emphasize the ones that are doing um, above average, the ones that are doing um, below average. That makes for a more um, honest um, visualization of that topic. Although it enrages you uh, a little bit to, to see it. But why? Why is um, visualization and honest visualization so urgent in the context of public administration. And this is my my last uh, thought uh, for you for you guys a year ago and one day. This was published by an official account uh, uh, of the of the Department of national security in, in Spain. Just look at the map and those numbers and the randomness of the size of those circles. Thank goodness for, for Twitter uh, users who are always on top of, uh, of this. Right. The, the one on the on the left is it's it's a shame that that um, a for for something as critical as informing about the data uh, in uh, of of a of a pandemic, they completely disregard the the rules of proper uh, data visual communication. At the, um, as, as uh, Beatrice was, uh, was saying, I run a uh, foundation uh, for, that aims to, to help uh, public administrations and, and, um, and private sector to, to use visualization to increase transparency. And we're also doing projects to, to bring data and visual literacy to, to citizens. And we think that visualization could be a great tool to, to augment the reach of open uh, data. Newspapers have done it um, for, for a while. El País was an absolutely wonderful example of how, a wonderful example of how to do this in, during the, the pandemic, they published uh, wonderfully rich uh, um, visual stories that put the pandemic in context uh, for for their for their audiences. The uh, the Spanish uh, Ministry of Health uh, at the very beginning had a completely uh, 
awful. I'm 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 not blaming them for 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 that being awful. It's a it's always a matter of resources. But they had a, an awful page uh, where they were collecting this this data, and and now um, after uh, uh, a few a few uh, some time uh, afterward, they they put together a somewhat um, interesting uh, page to. Uh, with all the data um, for for public administrations, for research institutes, and for citizens to to consume. The issue I have with this great page that they put together uh, later was that the state of alarm in Spain was declared uh, in in March. This tool was published in May, two months after the state of, of alarm uh, had been declared, a month and a half after uh, the, the first wave was, was coming down. This is a tool that was meant to, uh, to help public administrations, businesses, uh, citizens to understand and, and make uh, decisions about whether to move around or, or not. It was published so much later than than when the issue was being uh, urgent. As a comparison, um, a group of us at the University of Girona, it was the three three of us, uh, over weekends put together a dashboard with uh, world data, uh, just for us to to play with. Uh, with the data a, uh, a little bit. And as I was saying, it was put together over, over the, the weekend, and then it was used by, uh, by media outlets in Spain and in Argentina as a basis for, for some, of their, um, some of their dashboards. It was just a, um, an exercise for us and we put it together super fast because we knew that if you take months to to show this, it it becomes um, useless. And there's a, there's an entire this is this is hosted on a on a platform called called Observable HQ that has a wonderful collection of um, of notebooks uh, around. COVID data, I invite you to explore it and marvel at what individual scientists um, have put together uh, to sort of add context and inform uh, on, the, on this topic. Very recently, we had the same issue in Spain. Now that we're starting with vaccinations, with vaccinations. This is the, the website uh, from the health ministry that uh, where, you, where you can find the, the latest data on, on vaccinations. And right there, you've got the open data uh, table. They actually have had at the beginning only the PDFs, I believe, and they added the, the ODS um, file to it. But there's no context to it, it's just the raw uh, data. That is not a way to, to release and to do to, to data communication for, the, for your citizens. So this is the this, this is what the what that Excel file um, looks like. It's just the by the way you can see well you can't really appreciate it here, but they're they're entered manually. The they were entered manually. There was not there's no uh, automatic process behind this. Um, the the numbers and the, the the names of these uh, provinces. They actually have random extra spaces, um, some of them. And there's in the collection of, they, they release this every day, and in the collection of, um, 
of um, open uh, spreadsheets, you can tell that they're manually entered because there's a few instances in which Ceuta and Melilla, two very small uh, autonomous cities in Africa that are part of Spain, have more um, cases than population they have because of an extra uh, zero um, somewhere. So at the foundation, we um, this this is spun off from a, from a, an exercise in the in the master's program uh, on visual tools to empower citizens that we uh, co-sponsored with a university in in Girona. We took that and we created both a, uh, a more modern uh, format for for the the data. We outputted a JSON um, by by date, organized by by date. And we also uh, created this um, this tracker of the of the vaccination uh, rate in Spain, aimed at uh, analyzing if whether or not the each region was on track to meet the um, what the, the government had set up to to um, vaccinate in the first um, phase. And you can see whether or not they are um, on track or not to, to do that. Wondering about the reason someone has chosen that data set for their, for their argument and why they have chosen it, uh, why they've chosen the data frame, why they've chosen the format to, to output that why they use that visual uh, representation. What is the annotation in plan is something we need to be very aware of. And all this trouble can be easily fixed. Are we being transparent about our methodology and releasing the data that's, that's visualized? If you do that, then you're being um, honest and, and ethic eth uh, about your uh, about your, your data communications, um, communication efforts. And that paired with confronting um, an ethical database and increasing data and, and graphic literacy would be a good start. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaquille. Uh, yeah, it's great to see so many examples and uh, tips. I retain uh, three takeaways, three verbs, uh, contextualize, put visuals in context, connect, push boundaries, and use honest visuals to connect, and revolutionize and increase transparency and accountability. Uh, we are going to start the round of questions. I see some on the chat box. And my first one, my first question to you could be, um, are there any global principles or standards on how to create honest visuals? Or are there talks about how to develop some principles about this? So, yeah, so uh, actually after the, um, the first um, um, meeting you guys organized, there were, I think, I think it was after my talk, there was, there was a very similar question. Um, whether or not there are, uh, I think it was more aimed as like, can we create official guidelines to to make sure that our visualizations are honest? The, uh, we at the at the foundation we're we're trying to create we're trying to publish a um, white book on on data communication data visual communication. For, for the public sector, that's one thing. Um, Alberto Cairo's uh, book, How Charts Lie, is a, an absolutely wonderful um, uh, example of how to, um, how to raise awareness about um, um, how to make, how to be aware. It's, 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 it's more aimed at uh, spotting um, uh, Parts that that lie that is misleading that are misleading than anything else, but it also gives you a good um, 
um, ground uh, to to stand to actually then you develop uh, some some guidelines. Um, I think that um, there are there might be um, if there are colleagues here at the from oh god no maybe not from the ONS. Um, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Just realized as I was saying it. But uh, they have done... it's going to be on YouTube, okay? Okay. Because <laughs> uh, they have done um, a really wonderful job at, they're doing a wonderful job at uh, using data visualization to, to communicate. And I believe they have um, set up guidelines of how to, um, how to handle data visualization uh, in, uh, for official uh, statistics. I know that the Spanish National Institute has recently hired a few um, very bright data visualization experts to, and I'm positive they'll be um, sort of uh, structuring and, and, and setting up some guidelines for data visual communication there. Great. So there seems to be some uh, some trend towards uh, some guidelines. That's that's good to know. We have another question on the chat box about your um, USA map. How did yes. you do the animation in the Republican and Democratic map you showed? How it was done? Yeah. How did you do the animation? Uh, so no, I didn't do it. It was uh, it's a uh, it's by Karim Duyev, uh, a. Uh, data visualization um, specialist. It's on, it's on one of his notebooks uh, from Observable HQ. Right. Uh, it's uh, it's using D3, the sort of the standard um, data visualization uh, library, uh, JavaScript library for data visualization. If that was the the question. Great. Thank you. Uh, another question. Mm. Are there any public bodies who do a good job, in your opinion, in terms of uh, honest visuals, honest data visualization? Yeah, I think that the um, um, ONS is a is a good uh, reference. I know that local administrations in some local administrations in Spain um, do uh, quite well. I know. Um, uh, Berlin, uh, I think it's the Berlin Municipal Authority also does um, does great. Um, there are a few, yes. Great, I will follow up with them. Um, you mentioned the importance uh, recommendation of bewaring of uh, the data sources. Yes. Um, which authoritative uh, or official sources uh, do you recommend us to use? Um, I think so. So it depends on, on what you're what you're trying to to do. Uh, but even when they are the authority on the on the subject, you should always look at the methodology of how the data was collected and what the data uh, leaves out or or includes. I remember a very interesting conversation with. A um, uh, with a with a uh, uh, it was the the business reporter or a business reporter or a business editor at a newspaper where I work that um, assumed that the data released by a central bank was uh, correct, and I said, you know, that they may be using um, some. Um, they have a statistical model to come up with this this number. They have um, they probably either collect the data or use data from another source to do this. Have you checked that? And she said, no, I assume it's correct. So even with official sources, you need to look at the at the methodology. You need to look at what's collected. And what's um, what's excluded in order for you to explain what is that you're looking at and add sufficient context for the for the audience or the citizens or whoever you're um, you're communicating this to um, uh, 
Um, so it's helpful, basically, for that. And you frame it in the correct way. Right. Um, there's a very interesting question about um, honesty in the media. We can encourage ethical database in public institutions, but how can we encourage the media, especially the sensational parts of the press, to use honest visuals? Um, I think we can only do that by training uh, the public to spot misleading charts. So if we train the public to, to spot them, uh, that will mean they won't trust that news outlet and they would lose readership. So, so if we punish, the, punish them for misusing them, then uh, I'm guessing they will, they will stop. Maybe not. Punishment is never a, uh, a good, uh, good thing. Maybe we can encourage people to, to tell them, look, if you do this, I would read your, um, your news outlet, but if you keep doing this, I won't. I know, I think, but I think the training the public is absolutely essential to, um, to do this. And training the public can be done by the, by public administrations, by them using the right methods, by them um, releasing the, the right visualizations, and by them uh, releasing the data in formats that allow not just uh, news media, but uh, large, uh, uh, smaller uh, organizations or activist organizations to, to create visualizations. Right, so we're looking forward to seeing your uh, white book with guidelines on honest visuals uh, to keep training and educating ourselves and the public. Uh, there's a comment uh, from, um, let me see, from Joseph Davies. Uh, thank you very much about the code for creating the US animation. And uh, let me see if something else came. When using different data sources, how do you deal with an harm harmonization of the data. Maybe it's a little bit more technical, but with the right message, how do you harmonize the data? That's that's a question for a um, better trained statistician. If you have a statistician in your team, ask her how, um, how to handle uh, that. Okay. It's a case by case. Um, mm -hmm. Another one on um, data literacy, more serious and uh, data information literacy is so important these days. Training to be offered in schools. Okay, but this is more a comment than a question. I would like to ask participants if they have any other question, maybe unmute yourself and ask uh, Shaquin directly. We have a few more minutes and if not, we will close the session. Someone wants to unmute her or himself. It doesn't seem to be the case. Um, so then, uh, thank you very much, Shakin, for being here with us today, for sharing all your experiences and insights. It was really very, very insightful. Um, for my colleagues, I would like to ask them to stay tuned because we have two new webinars coming up. Maybe if you can share the next slide. Well, this is about the launch of the EU Open Data Days which we launched last week on the occasion of the International Open Data Day. They will take place in November, fully online, and will focus on the needs of the EU public sector. There will be two days on EU database, open data and data visualization, and one day on the annual data competition, EU Dataton. And then just to finish the next, next week, we will have two new webinars, one on mapping, and another one on Power BA, and you see the links in the slide. Maybe, Shaquin, if you can show us the next slide. Next one. Sound is not great. Thank you.
Thank you very much and um, see you soon, maybe next week in these two new webinars. Stay well, stay safe and have a great weekend. Bye.